um hi guys i'm ayushi and uh, i'm a 2020 batch student and i'm currently uh, uh studying mathematics and uh, triple e uh, here at bitspalani hyderabad campus and i'm also a member of the development division here at uh, google uh, developer student clubs uh, of bitspalani hyderabad campus and today we're going to have a workshop on uh, getting used to game dev so i'm sure all of you have played games and uh, stuff and you guys are must be pretty excited to learn how you know the uh, magic is going to actually happen so um i'm going to start sharing my screen okay like my slides uh, okay yeah right i hope it's visible could um could i get like a confirmation hello Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just just a second, okay. I'll be back. Uh. Okay. So uh, yeah. Here we go. So so that uh, today's workshop is about introduction to game development with Unity. So I'll. get back to what unity and everything is okay so um so this is our plan for today okay so you can uh, go through what's written here all right so um so i i planned it out like first i'll be giving you like a uh, brief instructions for installing unity in case you want to uh, code along with me okay and then uh, while i'll explain uh, so you know you can unity can start you know installing in the background okay and so this is the end game for today <laughs> uh, don't pun intended uh so i mean this is like i would say it's a game game but it's like a good place to start i would say and i'll give you like a small demo i just made a build of the game so you know so uh it should like look like this right so this is what we will try to accomplish towards the end of this session so i'll close it okay back to presentation all right so uh right now to install unity first you will have to go to the unity store okay then you'll have to click on install unity and then it will get you to unity hub okay after that you'll have to create an account so you can um sign in with your uh, like the google account or facebook or something and then uh, yeah then after that you just install the latest version of unity or uh, try and try to go for the lts version which is uh, the long term support version of unity okay and after that uh, for scripting Uh, you could install either vs code or mono develop um personally i prefer vs code but it's up to you okay like i have vs code installed right now so uh, also one more thing after you're done um installing unity okay click on create project okay it won't uh, show you empty to you okay so just pick any random project and just get on with it and after that you know delete it and uh, go to unity hub okay so this is unity hub you okay, click on new project and it'll show you like empty 2d or something okay right it got stuck uh -huh. it'll show you templates and it'll show you empty 2d and just try to switch the version whatever you want okay so this is how you can um, you know create a new project and just check the path where you want to store it all right so this is like uh, the basic installation and again if you have any questions like you're not able to do it or whatever you can ask uh, me in the end uh, also like uh, unity has you know a video on how to install unity so you could check that out as well okay so uh coming to our agenda for today what is game development all right so a uh, long story short it is like a process of developing a video game all right so again this is quite interesting as it ranges from like you know a single person to an entire team so you know there could be like a single person like me who will create everything from start to finish or i could work with a team okay as companies usually do and create the whole game all right so uh, again now what so who all are the people involved in um, making a game so it's basically the designers who are responsible for the level design and uh, other aspects then the programmers who are actually involved in scripting then we have artists who create the art assets and the scenery and everything like that sound engineers uh to you know create the sfx the music these guys are very important okay artists and sound engineers because i mean again playing a game is you know it's like an audio visual experience okay to a good extent and there are testers testers are also really important they play test the game so and this is like a very important phase in uh, game development because this is where actually the bugs come out and you know you can take a call if your game is um is it interesting to play because nobody i mean there's no point in creating a game which is quite boring 
right? This is uh, a very important. So all of these are actually pretty important in their own way. Okay, and uh, so this is about what is game development. So uh, moving on to a few game genres. So uh, these are a few game genres, but it's not limited to all of these. Okay, so you have action, adventure, RPG, which is uh, role-playing games, simulation, strategy, scientific games or educational games, and there are other uh, miscellaneous types of games like party games, trivia games, board games, card games, etc. Uh, then there's also like FPS. I'm pretty sure all of you are familiar with what FPS is, first-person shooter. Okay, so here are a few genres. Okay, then uh, coming to another very important topic, uh, what are game engines? Okay, so they're basically like uh, integrated development environments, you could say, for making games. All right, and so they have like a ready-made like um, suite of like uh, visual development tools and uh, software components that you can keep reusing. All right, so they basically they do the work for you. They're like a black box, and uh, if you guys are familiar with the um, Oops concept of abstraction, okay, right? You um, cover all the complexities and you just show the important features. So that is what a game engine is basically. So it just simplifies your work, like makes your life so much easier. I'll show you again towards another you know, physics and scripting part of our session. Okay, so and again, these are the components. So like you have a rendering engine for the graphics. And you have a physics engine to you know simulate um, real life physics or whatever. Or you could tweak it again. Yeah, again, I'll show you how to tweak it. And then you have like a sound engine. Then we have scripting. Then we have input. So you know input can be taken in various ways uh, in games. Like you could have like a keyboard input, or you could have like a joystick controller. It all depends. Uh, then networking. Now networking is for games that are like multiplayer, so you need to network. And then there are AI systems involved as well. Okay, so. Now, so these are like a few popular game engines. So this is Unity. Okay, uh, let me get my laser pointer on. Right. So this is Unity. Okay. This is Unreal. This is Godot. This is CryEngine, and uh, this is Game Maker Studio. Now these are like a few very like popular game engines, and the one you use, it's personally your choice. But uh, what I use is Unity. All right. So um, again, what is Unity? And uh, okay, yeah. Also, if you see, like on the posters, this was the logo that we used. And whereas in the slides, I've used this logo. So actually, this logo was uh, released just last year. But I feel that this logo has a lot of nostalgia, uh, you know, attached with it. So I think I like both logos. So this is the thing. Okay. So uh, again, what is Unity? You know, coming back to that question. So it's a game engine, and I hope now you guys are familiar with what a game engine is. Um, also, one uh, special thing about Unity is that it's a cross-platform game engine. So, uh, so if I use like a Windows device, I can actually make a game that could run on a Mac OS or maybe like a Linux machine or even like I can make a WebGL build of it or even like a PlayStation build if I want to. Okay, I'll show you that as well. Okay, and uh, so again, uh, Unity it was made in 2005. Okay, by Unity Technologies, and um, you can make like a variety of uh, games on it, like. You can make 2D games, 3D games. You can um, simulate like AR, which is augmented reality, or VR, which is virtual reality. And then you can make simulations. You can make films and all that. Okay. And uh, another thing about Unity is that its source code was written in C++. But uh, also, I, I should point out that um, the source code of C++ it's not OSS. It's actually proprietary software, so it's closed source. Okay. And uh, so also, Unity uses C# -sharp for scripting. Okay. So Again, I want to say that you can use JavaScript as well, but it's been like deprecated. So I would be um, a little uh, skeptical about using JS. And also like Unity documentation is in um, C Sharp. I'll come back to what Unity documentation is. Okay. And uh, okay, this is a little fun fact. So, um, so Unity was also used to create backgrounds for the film called The Lion King, which I remember watching in the theaters. And now it's kind of like interesting how, you know, I am, you know, holding a session on Unity and game development. So the circle of life, pun intended again. Okay. And right now coming back to another very important question, why am I using Unity? Okay. So it's basically a personal choice. And uh, one main reason is that it's free. Okay. And it's really easy to use. And, uh, there's this thing known as Unity documentation. Okay, I'll show you something. So this is basically Unity documentation, and you have like a lot of um, you know, scripting stuff over here. Like anything that 
you know you see in unity you'll get um you know a good explanation of that how to use that and stuff like this see so i'm going to again i'm going to demo this okay for you guys so this is unity uh, documentation and here if you see you can switch to the manual as well the manual is also pretty good like here okay and then there is this thing known as uh, unity forum so unity forum is basically the stack overflow of unity and it's uh, pretty good you can ask questions and then you know there will be other unity users who will reply to you uh, then we have the unity asset store okay so so over here you can basically buy assets for your games and uh, they might be free they might be paid but i mean it depends on you again most of it is free okay and then again unity is cross platform as i mentioned earlier and uh, oh okay unity is free unless until you make like 100000 us dollars in revenue after that you have to pay like a token amount but 100000 dollars is a lot of money and if your game does that well i think uh, it's okay to let go of that token amount but it's free for like us as students okay and so i mean all these features just make it very popular for indie developers and programmers um, and if your question is what are indie developers they basically independent developers the single team you know people i was talking about okay moving on so these are this is like a list of games developed by unity so um so we have angry birds 2 and i'm sure you've played like a bunch of these so we have angry birds 2 we have among us we have doki doki literature club i haven't played this game let me just clarify okay then uh, we have temple run okay and then we have overcooked both the uh, versions and we have pokemon go and mario kart so if you observe pokemon go is like a simulation game among us is a mobile game so it just shows how good unity is like cross platform for cross platform development okay uh okay so moving on so now i think we'll come to the scripting part okay so physics in unity this is like a really important topic so unity uses vectors okay like our normal vectors like it has like a vector 2 it has a vector 3 vector 2 is for 2d vector 3 is for 3d but you can use a vector 3 in 2d as well okay, i'll show you that and uh, so you can so vectors are used to define like the position the velocity and the direction then these are like uh, these four bullet points are like the components that you'll find okay in unity and i'll show that to you as well later you know coming to the scripting part uh, i'll be using c sharp for the said reasons because uh, unity's documentation is in c sharp and c sharp is pretty easy okay and also if you have a background in c++ or java or even both uh, that's pretty good you don't even need to learn c sharp you know or you can just like uh, look up the uh, you know stuff that you don't know the syntax you don't know online okay and so this is what you need basically like a basic idea about variables data types access specifiers functions operators that kind of stuff and here inheritance concepts are kind of important over here so you should be clear with these as well and i'll tell you a little bit okay when i demonstrate okay and uh, here is all right this is what i told you that don't use js i mean it's not recommended use uh, c sharp to and, and it's called unity script by the way like their version is called unity script okay right so uh moving on to the um demonstration part okay so i am going to close unity hub because i don't need it anymore and this is so this is my sample scene that i created okay but i'm going to start in a fresh scene so uh, to create a scene you just you know control and create a new scene but uh, here i'm going to start off with a blank screen okay so currently this is my layout but i want to use a custom layout so you can like shift things here and there to you know orient it however you want but i've already saved my custom layout so i'm going to use it and you can save it and you can save it a custom so here again this is a personal choice you can use it however you feel like okay so coming to the demo so uh, at each time you open unity you'll have like a main camera set up with you and you'll have like a background associated with it so uh, for now i think i'm just going to set it to black okay uh here you can either like drag and drop i mean you can like stretch it over here like this or you could actually change the rgb values gets totally up to you so um I'll explain to you what 
uh, all this stuff means okay so this is i mean like just to get you like comfortable with the interface okay so this is basically the hierarchy so everything that you see in the scene view okay this is the scene view you can uh, it'll be it'll keep you know coming over here getting listed it'll keep getting listed here okay and this is the project window okay uh, and here you could uh, you know you'll see a lot of stuff over here you know all your project files will be contained over here could all i did not create all these these are already there and then you have like the console window so all our errors and uh, warnings and you know uh, errors warnings and there was okay debug log you'll find it over here okay and this is the game view so uh, so after you like create the game or, or if you want to test your game you have to come back to the game view okay so i'm just going to change it to full hd for now okay the scale is at 5x i'm going to like reduce it to the minimal you know the smallest one here okay this is the animator we don't need it now because we're actually not animating anything for today okay but this is also kind of like interesting you can you know create animations in unity all right and this is the inspector window so if suppose i click on the main camera you can see the properties associated with the inspector window now this is like this is the transform component if i want to move my camera i can change these values right here in the inspector window and uh, you observed how i changed the background all right so i hope you guys are following i hope there aren't any questions any questions uh oh thank you all right this is a fake account this is my friend's account hi bhavish and uh, all right thanks okay check the package man manager in unity all right okay 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 oh, fine you guys are answering questions thank you very much okay uh right so um now i'm going to show you how to create like a sprite in unity so my plan was to just make like a base first like for the game so go here right click 2d object because we're using 2d like you you can use a 3d object but look very it just defeats the purpose because you want people to see the 3d aspect of it okay here so this is like my square i'm just going to name it base okay and uh, here i'm going to use the move tool this is the move tool all right i'm going to keep it here all right and uh, i think i am going to scale it now so this is the scale tool all right so i'm going to pull it like this all right so you can uh, use a scale okay all right one more thing i forgot to mention you uh, please buy a mouse okay for unity otherwise it will be like difficult to like draft or whatever you're making all right so i'm going to i'm going to use make one more sprite for my player okay and i'm going to call it player okay so again use the transform and then move translate it all right so uh, now you can see like a basic um, you know base and a uh, player and stuff all right and now if you observe the um inspector window you can see like a sprite render so this basically um, you know tells you that okay this is a sprite and this is the color for it now um let me change the color okay i have like a tile palette from which i'm going to like pull in the um, you know values for the color just give me a second uh what color did i use for the base there? let's see one sec going back to the slides because i forgot what okay this is the dark one all right right so this is basically if you want the dark color the rgb values are 71 13 oops 13 and 33 all right so this is how you can like change the color you can just like simply you know just pick a color but i use the color palette so this is what i'm doing i'm going to keep this guy white for now okay all right so i think now that we're happy with the color we can uh, move on to um the physics part of it okay so right now there is nothing attached to it so i'm going to uh, go here see this is on base all right i'm going to add a component okay so i'm going to add rigid body 2d okay so now it will simulate like a rigid body 
uh, rigid body's properties onto this object. Okay, so again, if I maximize this, you can see that it has a mass of one, it has a linear drag of zero, an angular drag of 0 0.05, a gravity scale of one, and these are the other features, okay, collision, this, that, this and that. Now, uh, if you see, now if I go into game mode and look at this, okay, the, there are no constraints to this and gravity is going to act on this. So you will be able to see how everything just, you know, falls to the floor, okay? Now like demo this, you will understand how important physics is in Unity. Okay, everything should fall, see, right, it fell. If I go to the scene view, so it's not there anymore. And if you check the uh, transform, you can see how the position is rapidly uh, going down and why, okay? So I'm gonna exit the game view. Oh, also one more thing, once you're in game view, right? And if you make changes to um, anything, so if I wanna put it back to zero, so those changes won't actually be reflected in your um, scene, okay? You can do whatever changes, they're pretty um, dynamic, right, see? I mean, like once you like exit, suppose I change the color, it will still be the same. Okay, like these changes in game view won't reflect. Okay, so here it is. So to avoid the whole falling problem, I'm just going to restrict, I'm just going to freeze the uh, constraints. Okay, I don't want this to move. Okay, this is my base. I actually make it a little bigger. I'm gonna use the rec tool to make it bigger. I'm gonna stretch it till here, okay. Here. So now it won't fall or anything. Uh, yeah, see, it's not falling if you, it's it's just static over there, even though it has like a rigid body component attached to it. Okay, and so now I'm gonna like add a rigid body to this as well. Okay, and I should freeze the Z position, but then I wanna show you how it rotates later. Okay, after I attach like a player controller script to it. Okay, uh, what else? Gravity scale, I think uh, this is okay for now. Okay, I'm gonna save my work. Okay, it's very important to save your work if you think everything is going fine, otherwise there'll be like a lot of problems later. All right, and what else? Okay, I'll attach like a box collider to this. Now a box collider is kind of self-explanatory. It's just a box collider, it'll, get, it'll you know, helps to detect collisions and stuff. Here. And if I go on the edit collider thing, you can see exactly where, you know, what the dimensions are. Okay, so if I stretch it here, it'll detect collisions till this point. And if I maybe stretch it downwards, you'll see how it'll go in the air. Okay, now if I go into game view, right, if I press save, now go into game view, you'll see that it'll be like suspended in the air till where the collision detection is taking place. Yeah. So, oops, okay, it fell, sorry. I haven't uh, frozen the constraints. Uh, one sec, missed that. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna freeze the Z. Uh, and yeah, that's it. All right, this doesn't have a box collider. That's why it fell. My bad. I'm gonna give this a box collider as well. There have to be two box colliders, okay, to minimum to detect a collision. Okay, see, did you, can you guys see how it's in the air here? Because I extended the collider like that. I'm gonna like just revert my, this thing, you know? So here, go to edit and just, you know, adjust it like this, okay? So uh, I hope you are able to understand at least some of the physics that's involved and Right, I'm going to, I'll show you this later. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to move on to scripting. Okay, so, so now the aim of the game is that I want to like, so now my plan is that I want to, you know, make this guy move, okay, left and right. First, I'll try left and right. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to head over to, um, this is, okay, it's already done. I'm going to like create a new script. Okay, and I'm going to call it player movement. Okay, so it was basically right click and create a new script in case you missed it. And I'm gonna create a folder for this because it's very important during game development or any sort of development to stay organized. Okay, because you'll obviously like notice how there, there'll be like so many scenes by the end okay, of your game. And it'll be very difficult to keep track of all of them if they're just, you know, cluttered. And there'll be like, I don't know, seven, eight scripts, you know, per 
I don't know, game. So it'll be like at least seven, eight scripts and it'll be very difficult to manage all of them. And it just imparts like modularity to your game. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to open this up in uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay. It'll take a little time. It's pretty slow. Here. Okay. Uh, also now, can this be bumped into the comment section, this link? Can these two links be bumped? Oh, thanks, Shabham. Uh, oh, thank you, Vaishna, really. All right. Or I think, oh, wait, I think this was in the description, these two. Okay, so this is, again, this is Unity's documentation. I'm just going to close this. All right, so uh, firstly, I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to edit it later here. OK, so right now that we're in Visual Studio Code, I would like to tell you that uh, each time you open a script, OK, so this is like the default um, stuff that pops in, OK, default code. This is the start method. You can see that it's called before the first frame update. And this is the void update method. So it's called once every frame, OK? There's something there's also something known as fixed update and awake method and stuff, but I don't think we need to get into that. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so this is using Unity engine. This is basically saying that it's a namespace. And we're using these files. Okay. And uh, this is called example class, but I'm going to change it to player movement. Okay. Because my uh, script was titled player movement. So I'm going to call it player movement. Okay, and this is mono behavior. So basically, um, uh, how do I describe uh, mono behavior? Um, it, it's like a it's like a base class from which you know uh, every like script in Unity uh, is deriving from. Okay. Uh, right. So I don't need this comment. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm showing you how cool uh, Unity's like documentation is. So I'm going to keep this as a public variable for speed. Yeah, uh, public movement speed um, is 5F. OK, so this is a float variable. Uh, private, mm, 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 private void of date. OK, so this is actually, if there is nothing written over here, it's private by default. OK, or I should probably explain what a class is first. So this is a class. Okay, and then you have methods inside a class. It's like a blueprint or prototype, you could say. All right. And uh, so basically, anything that is private inside this class will only be visible to this class and it cannot be accessed by other classes. And this is like a really important feature of, um, you know, scripting in C sharp here because there are so many. So in every script, you'll find like a void update or a void start or avoid awake and it'll be very difficult to differentiate between all of them so this is uh, pretty important okay now for but for example this is public float so it can be accessed by other classes okay and uh, here you can see that there is something called a uh, float horizontal input okay is equal to input dot get access horizontal so now this is something that is related to uh, unity's input manager i'll show you where it is yeah. Okay. All right. So also each time you enter unit, you okay, will compile the scripts and if there are any errors, it will throw an error. So later I'll try making a mistake and I'll show you how the error pops up. Okay. I'm going to go into edit project settings. Uh, input manager. Okay. So I went to edit, I went to project settings and input manager. Now you can see that for a horizontal input, it's called horizontal. Okay. And if you um, press the left button on your keyboard it'll go negative so it'll return like a minus one and a positive button will go right i mean will make your player go right it'll return a plus one and there are the, these alternate buttons okay a and d uh, similarly for the vertical input you have these okay down up s and w all right so uh, this is our input manager so this is where it's coming from okay so uh we don't need vertical inputs so i'm going to delete this bit of code okay so um i'm going to call it where all right uh and we have so okay we have a debug.log thing going on over here which i don't think we need but i think just to show you guys i think it's okay all right so uh what have they written inside the new vector three 
Okay, I'm just going to use like a shorthand over here. This is too long. Here, this is, these are equivalent, okay? So you like, you have a new vector three, horizontal input is basically this. Okay, did you, did you notice how the name of the string is the same as the input manager? Okay, so keep that in mind. If you make like a mistake, it won't work. Okay, if you don't copy the exact same name. All right, uh, so um, over here, like you have your horizontal input. Okay, and I think movement speed, now they're basically multiplying everything, right? So you'll get that value. We don't need this, so I'm gonna keep this zero because I wanted to move left and right, okay? This is the Y uh, component, so I don't want it to go up and down right now. I'm gonna show it to you, like it's a left and right thing. Okay, and over here, I'm also going to uh, define like a private rigid body reference. Okay, because that's going to come up. Okay, pretty frequently. So it's, I mean, it's useful if you just define it at the beginning. Okay, a uh, private rigid body RB, you can call it anything, but you can, I mean, it's good if it's RB. Okay, it's a 2D rigid body. Okay, this component is actually the same as this. We'll access this. Okay. Uh, yeah, why did this go into light mode? Oh my God, I can't. So, I don't know guys, but you should not work with light mode. It's like a crime. Uh, one sec, preferences, how do I change this? Uh, <laughs> Wait, wait, I think I'll have to change it later. Where did I keep it? All oh, right, it was in my general settings. Your editor should be in dark, okay? This is not <laughs> mandatory, but I think it's the norm. Okay, so here we have this ready. Let me check if I'm missing anything. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I need, uh, okay, I don't think I need this now, but I might as well. I'm gonna define a start method. I'm gonna, oh, okay. So, Getting the rigid um, body 2D component like this. Yeah. Here. This is fine. Not all the time. I think I'm just going to move it outside. Just take this normal scalar multiplication. I mean, yeah. Movement speed was five. Yeah, I think this is fine. So uh, now I'm going to like try now, now that we've written the um, script down, right? I'm going to like try running it. Okay, and the way you do it that you add is so now I want to control the player with this set script. Okay, so we'll head here, right? Click on my player, add component. All right, C sharp script. New script. Okay. Oh sorry, I have to like look for it like this. Okay, no, no, wait, I'll just do this instead. Just you can like drag and drop it over here and it'll get added. So here you can see that uh, movement sheet is five. It's drawing it from my code. This is public, right? Here. Yeah. And let's try uh, running this. Oh, look. It's moving left and right. I'm pressing like the left arrow key. It's going left. And you can also confirm it with the uh, position like here. 
see right is going right left is going left but right now if i press i don't know some other button it won't work apart from a and b right so here i'm able to like move the player now and i'll show like i'll unfreeze z and i'll show you what happens okay it'll start becoming like really wonky okay okay once it starts jumping it'll start becoming really wonky i'll show it to you at that time okay uh, so now i think we've gotten our player to move left and right successfully if there are any questions i'd be happy to answer them uh, what uh, light board is a crime of course <laughs> yeah okay um coming back to right now okay so now i want to make this guy jump essentially okay so i'm going to add like one more um 2d object so like as a base okay so i'm going to call this a uh, platform okay right now uh, again i'm going to like i want it to be a little stretchy stretched out okay yeah. and let's also like shift it to this side okay and let's uh, duplicate this okay so the uh, shortcut to duplicate is control d or you could actually right click and click on duplicate if you forgot okay so uh so right now all of these have the same um transform position so they are like at the same place but they're actually separate okay here i think this is okay let's go into the scene view no it looks a little uh cramped but um here mm, yeah i think this is acceptable okay so again control s because we've made good progress okay uh now going on to ah uh, right now you want to do jumping right so now you got to like think that how will you jump okay so like for movement we use transform not position all right so that was pretty intuitive but now to jump what will you do so uh, the simple answer is you'll use the add force function all right so again i'll go into the this thing and here if you can see again i'm making use of unity documentation a uh, documentation because it's pretty good so what do i need so uh, all this stuff is pretty irrelevant here you can see rigid body 2d they've also used a reference right now we want to add force onto the rigid body 2d so i already did this bit okay so now all this stuff is there just changing the sprites color and stuff like i did it manually in the inspector you did it like this okay here you can change the position as well okay did i show you the console ha huh, right okay do you remember i had put like a debug dot log so each time i change the position you know you could see like a debug log over here all right so i think i we don't need the debug log so i'm going to like uh, delete it from my code okay uh so now what do we need uh we need to add a force so here we put it in fixed update but i don't think we need that so i'm just going to copy this here Okay, and I'm gonna paste it here. So my variable was called RB. So I'm going to make this change. Okay, and uh, this particular piece of code it has to like um run something like this. Okay, so I want it to be like if I press the space bar. Okay. If and only if I press the space bar, it has to jump. It shouldn't like start jumping randomly. All right. So I'm gonna use import dot get button down. Okay. Jump. All right. And I want my player to jump only once. Okay. So actually, what uh, another way I could have handled this was I could have um used colliders, and if it's touching that particular layer. or the platform i mean i could have given like a assign like a layer to my base platform and the other platforms and i could have said that only when my player is you know touching them only then can you jump like you can't jump in the air but uh, this is also another way to handle it but i'm going to show now so i'm going to use like a mat function okay for mat dot absolute just to get the absolute value of my rb my rigid body's velocity okay in the y direction i hope you guys understand what dot operators are so i'm using them quite a lot uh, so basically dot operators just give a reference okay so here so this is it i guess 
right? And uh, I don't need like uh, curly braces because this is just a single line that's being executed after the if. Yeah, so this is to make it jump. It's just comment here. All right, and RP, I told you, I've called it over here. Okay, so another way to handle this could be like I could uh, copy this like this and I could just keep on you know, placing it here like this all the time, but this is not a very good practice because and it's also very tedious. Okay, so you can just define it like that because you'll have later, you'll have like a lot of components to deal with like collision, like colliders and stuff. So you'll write like COLL is equal to get component or collider 2D and stuff like that. Okay, so I think we're done, but here uh, we need a jump force. Okay, so I'm going to define like another variable called jump force. Okay, so I think this is actually the same here. I'm going to copy paste this here. I'm going to call it jump force. Let's just keep it 5F for now. We can change it later. I'll show you how. Okay, just here. Okay, and here, okay, I need to switch up the parameters again. So I don't want this here. So um, in X, I think, I want to use this. What am I typing? Vector Y, uh, vector two. So this basically takes like three parameters: x, y, z, zero dot some force. All right, and this is again for the z component. All right. Uh, I'm gonna compile this. Is it okay? Have I covered everything? You know, we're gonna like try making it jump. Hmm. All right, so again, you head back over to Unity, you'll start compiling again. Okay, uh, I'm gonna check if. Oh, all right, we have to. Oh man, I should have assigned components to this after before I had done changes. It, it does not have like a rigid body and stuff. Things are gonna go awry. Uh, rigid body 2D. Box Collider 2D. Everything would have like fallen down. And what else? I want to freeze everything. I don't want it to move at all. Uh, 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 color, color. OK, I'm going to pull out my color palette. So just give me like a minute again. OK, uh, that's it. Wait, what color were those again? Okay, so you have to take so many efforts to make your game look pretty. So OK, this is orange and this was pink. So, uh, what is this? One fifty six fifteen seventy two. Okay. Uh, right. Is it okay now? Flip this here. Yeah. And as I change this also, now that I've opened my uh, thing, so this was two one four. 25 and what is it 62 okay yeah i'm gonna like duplicate this again yeah place it oh, and this is the third one so now let's again let's go into game view and let's try is it on game view Is it not working? Is this oh, all right? I have an error. Well, what's my error? Oh. Okay, float does not contain a definition for get button down. What is this? Uh, line number. Oh, great. So each time like an error is thrown, you have to like you can always check this. So no, this tells me that my player movement script has an issue, and this is the issue. Yeah. So I'm gonna like try fixing it. Line number twenty-two, right? Uh, uh, uh. 
Why is it not? Let me compare. All oh, right, horizontal input. That's the issue. It was just input. I think my intelligence is already at this point. Huh. Yeah, so it'll compile again. And all right, so we don't have any errors. Okay, so, okay, so you must have like realized by now that each time like you make an error, it won't let you go into game view unless and until you fix that error, all right? So here we go again. So now this guy is, okay, he can jump, but he can't jump very high. And now you can see because of the box colliders, it's colliding with this and it's not able to get through this. So I am going to go, I'm going to exit game view and I'm going to adjust the um, jump, this thing, okay, the jump force. I'm going to give it maybe a 10 or just to check. I'm going to um, adjust this as well. Okay. Right. Oh, yeah, now it can jump. Gravity scale is it's kind of floaty. I'm going to fix the gravity scale. So that it can like, uh, this is clear. Too. Yeah, it's not like it won't be in the air that long. Yeah. Oh, all right. Also, uh, again, you must have noticed that the background was kind of light. So again, I can fix the background. I need to pull out my color palette again. So this was 249, 228. And oh, this yellow doesn't look that bad, actually. And 212. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I also wanted to go a little faster. I'm going to bump it up to um, maybe seven. Here. So here we go. Okay, uh, here. So now it's able to jump and stuff. Okay. Also now uh, you guys must have noticed that uh, this is like pretty like uh, static. Okay, now that we have, I think it can go on for another 10 minutes. So I think this is pretty like static, like the camera, I mean, it's just focused on the one thing. So now I'm going to introduce you to like a tool called um, Cinemachine. So actually I already installed Cinemachine onto my um, Unity project, but the way you can do it is go to the package manager, okay? Uh, and go to packages, uh, Unity registry, okay? So if I click on this, I can already see Cinemachine installed, okay? So just go here and there'll be like a pop-up and stuff called Cine Studio or something like that. Just go on it, install, and it'll install it on its own. Right now, I think it's taking a lot of time, so I will skip that, and I will directly use in a machine. Okay, so here I'm going to save my work, and I'm going to right-click again. And here you can see Cine Machine. So I'm going to use like a virtual camera, all right? So by default, it's called CM, the VCAM one. Okay, so now uh, the thing is that I want uh, my camera to move along with this guy. So it's pretty easy. So I'm just going to head over to CMV cam one and I'm going to go to, uh, there is that follow thing. Wait one sec. All right, follow, follow is here. Right, I want this guy, I want the virtual machine to be, I mean, virtual camera to be focused on my player, okay? so. I'm just gonna click on my play. I mean, I'm just gonna drag and drop my player. Okay, I want him to follow here. All right. Uh, I don't want anything over here, so I'm gonna set it to none. Okay. So here we go. Okay. Uh, like this. Now you can uh, see the difference again. Okay? Uh, it's improved this game by tons. Okay, just the camera follow has made it look much more um, professional, I would say. And it doesn't feel like it's been created in the last 20 minutes or so. Okay. And uh, so I think this is uh, what I would like to share for today. Uh, like as far as the demo part is concerned. 
or do we have time to show how to build the game? Or do we need to learn coding for game dev? Yes. No, no, not C++ or Java, C sharp. I mean, yeah, you can use, uh, if you know C++ or Java, it'll be like helpful. Yeah, so uh, one sec. Is he there? Okay. Uh, I'll just show you how to build the game. I think it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to build settings. Okay. And over here, I'm going to add the open scene. Okay. So the scene was called demo. The one I had prepared in advance was called sample scene, but I don't want to include that in my build. Okay. So I'm going to unclick that. And now you can see how the uh, index has changed from one to zero. And uh, so here is what I was trying to tell you guys. Okay. So it's cross platform. You can make it on any platform you feel like. So I want to make like a Windows build for now because I'm using Unity on a Windows machine. And uh, I'm going to build it over here. I've already created like a, a you know, a build folder called WinBuild. I'm just going to like create an incremental build. When you do it, you're going to have to like, uh, you know, build it from scratch, but I'm not doing that because it'll take a while. Okay. And so this is going to go on for a bit. Look at more questions, comments. Uh, yeah, okay, oh, fine. So that builds are complete with um, more of my presentation. Like, you're not supposed to do much when it's building, but I think let's take a risk. So, uh, so I hope you guys followed uh, scripting in Unity and also the physics part. Like, I exposed you to like maybe two or three. Oh, okay, fine. It built. I'm just gonna like finished building. Uh, so I'm just going to go into here. Okay, this is the EXE. So you run that. Okay. And here. So this is the game that we built right now. Yeah. Right, it works. Yeah, I should have placed the, this thing differently. It's kind of crashing, but all right. I think this is fine. You can see how it works. So here I taught you how to build it as well. Okay. Uh, so now coming back to, so now that you guys learned um, you know, how to make the player move left and right, and you guys got familiar with the whole uh, interface of a game engine. Okay, so now the question is that how will you, how will you proceed from here on? Okay, so there's a lot of ways. Okay, so one of them is to read the Unity documentation. All right, and there's a lot, each time you get stuck, you can, you know, go there, read, uh, learn about more new functions, methods, everything that's involved, okay, in scripting. You can also refer to blogs. There are a very, there are pretty good blogs out there. All right. And a few good uh, YouTube channels would be Brackies. Uh, so Brackies is like my favorite YouTuber. All right. So I would highly recommend Brackies and his videos. And there's Sebastian, and there's Code Monkey, and there's Blackthorn Prod, there's Mix and Jam, there's GMTK. GMTK is like a game maker's toolkit, like his full form. And uh, he's more oriented towards level design, but I think you could watch this guy as well. He's pretty good. You know, and there's obviously there's Unity Technologies, okay, who have their own videos. Uh, I would say that the YouTubers are, you know, pretty good at explaining. But if there is a new uh, technology that uh, you know these guys introduce in their game, I mean, like a new uh, feature or whatever, so these Unity Technologies will be the first one to talk about it, okay. And uh, and they also have uh, sessions with uh, you know game developers, so that is also pretty good. You guys can go watch, okay. And also like the game that I made right now, if you could see that like, it was like a vertical level design, right? You could make like a vertical platformer or something like Donkey Kong maybe, or you could uh, make color switch if you wanted, you know, learn a, more, a little bit more about mechanics and stuff, or you could, um, you know, orient. So now I made the base like horizontally, right? You could make like a vertical base as well on either side and uh, duplicate the horizontal base to the top and you can make like a simple pong game, like a nice hockey kind of a thing. So there's like, you know, if you want to like get into game dev, today is a good day to start. All right. And uh, so moving on. And also I like to talk about game jams. Okay. These are so much fun. 
Okay, so and these are a few popular game jams, okay, which is uh, namely the Global Game Jam, Backies Game Jam. He's the same guy, the YouTuber. And there's uh, Ludum Dare. And uh, uh, Ludum Dare, the game jam is, I think it's held for two days, if I'm not mistaken. So right before the uh, game is held, right? They'll, I mean, the game jam is held, they'll uh, declare the theme for the game. Okay, so it's generally like one out of these. Uh, one second. Here. So they'll give you like a theme. So it could be strategy, it could be action, adventure, it could be like anything. And you're supposed to make like a game on that. Or they could give you something really abstract like time or whatever. So you're supposed to be creative and you know uh, start building your game. And so also in Ludum Dari, like you're supposed to make everything from scratch. Like you're supposed to make your assets from scratch. You're supposed to script from scratch. You're supposed to make music from scratch. Uh, also, if you guys want to make music from scratch, I think there's also a software called Bosca Seol, like B O S C A or C E O I L Bosca Seol. You could use that as well. I think Brackies has a video on that as too. Okay, and then there's, and then coming back to game jams, there's GMTK's game jam, and there are other uh, game jams organized by various colleges in our country. All right, so I also recently participated in a game jam with my uh, senior, and he's also a friend, Ruchar Raj, he's also here today. Okay, so it was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it, and, uh, you know, learned a lot of stuff along the way. So I think uh, game jams are a really, really fun activity. And then again, I think game development on its own, if anybody would, you know, is to ask me why should you do game development? I'd say it's fun. Okay, it's a hobby of mine, and uh, I hope you know it becomes a hobby for you guys as well because it's so much fun. I mean, like who wouldn't want to make games? So yeah. So I think uh, this is all I would like to share for today, and uh, I'm so happy you guys came today and attended the session, and uh, hopefully have motivated you a little, given you a little push, and hopefully you guys understood the demo as well. You know, right from uh, you know where the um, you know how the Unity interface looks like and. Uh, you know how where things are, how to script, how to um, attach, you know, uh, you know tools like Cinema Machine and stuff, and building the game, which is also pretty important because that's how you can share it and you know you can flex your game, okay, and <laughs> stuff like that. So I hope you guys had fun. And uh, again, like I would like to thank my club for giving me this, uh, giving me the opportunity to you know uh, help and explain uh, this uh, you know concept to you guys and. Uh, yeah, I think that's all for today. And I'd like you guys to stay safe and take care. And thank you. So I think we could probably, uh, can Unity only be used for 2D, 3D games that involve movement? What is this supposed to mean, Bhaviyesh? What? You can use it. You can use it to make films, right? Or simulation or animations and stuff. So like uh, like in our college, uh, I'd say Birds Goa, I know somebody who used, um. Uh, the Unity software to create like a hospital, um, this thing, like a hospital simulation, like if, or, you know, or something like that, or or you can make it uh, something like if there's a fire, how would you like escape? So you can use um, this concept called uh, a nav mesh to simulate AI agents. Okay, so I think you can use Unity for so much stuff. All right, Techie Junior says, thank you, nice session. Thank you so much, Shrikan. Okay, uh, are in the show, all right. Thank you. So I think we can end this live stream here, right?